This audio recording is brought to you free of charge by reformedaudio.org. We invite you to visit our website to take a look at the theological and historical resources we have available for download. This is an excerpt from A Short History of the Early Church by Harry R. Bohr. Chapter 1, The World of the Early Church. The Christian church was born in a world that was already old. Great empires had risen and fallen. The glories of Egypt, Sumer, Babylon, Assyria, Persia, and Greece lay centuries in the past. Now it was Rome, the greatest of the ancient empires, that governed the civilized world. It was almost exclusively in that empire that the Christian church lived the first five centuries of its life. Before beginning a discussion of the history of the church, it is important to note briefly the main characteristics of the world in which it developed. In doing so, mention should be made of the Roman Empire, the Jewish background of the church, the influence of Greek thought, and the various kinds of religion that Christianity found in its environment. The Roman Empire The Christian church was born in the Roman Empire. This great and powerful commonwealth stretched from England to Persia and from the Sahara to northwestern Germany. The Mediterranean Sea was not then, as it is now, a sea touching the shores of many nations. It was rather a great inland waterway uniting the many provinces of the empire that surrounded it on all sides. Hundreds of tribes lived within the Rome's borders, and nations with a history far longer than that of Rome were under its control. The center of the empire was the city of Rome, and in Rome all the power of government was in the hands of the emperor. Number 1. Growth At the birth of Jesus, Rome was about 750 years old. It had been founded as a small village on the banks of the Tiber River in western Italy. It grew to become a town, a city, and a small state. By means of wars and treaties with neighboring states, it continued to expand. In 265 B.C., 500 years after its founding, Rome was master of the Italian peninsula. It then reached out westward, across the sea. In less than a hundred years, it had conquered the islands of Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia, and the powerful state of Carthage in North Africa, and much of Spain. Thereupon it turned eastward and northward. It conquered all the remaining lands around the Mediterranean Sea, all of Gaul to the north, and parts of modern Germany. In the course of this expansion, Palestine came under the control of the empire in 63 B.C. and became a province in the empire in A.D. 6. Number 2 government. Until 27 BC, all Rome's territories were administered by a form of government known as a republic. In it, the Roman Senate was very powerful, and no single individual controlled the government. In 27 BC, however, after disastrous civil wars lasting more than a hundred years, the full power of Rome was given into the hands of Gaius Octavianus, the nephew of Julius Caesar, conqueror of Gaul and one of the greatest Romans. Octavianus is known in history as Caesar Augustus, first and greatest of the emperors. With him, the Republic ended and the empire began. He reigned from 27 B.C. to A.D. 14. He is the Caesar of whom it is written in Luke chapter 2, verse 1, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. Except for some fighting at the frontiers of the empire, the reign of peace begun by Augustus lasted more than 200 years. It was during these two centuries that the church, arising out of the life and work of our Lord, became an empire-wide witness to the gospel. Number three, boundaries. The boundaries of the empire were clear. On the west, its boundary was the Atlantic Ocean. From the Alps to the North Sea, the Rhine River separated Gaul from the unconquered Germany. Rising in southwestern Germany, not far from the source of the Rhine, the Danube River flowed eastward to the Black Sea. It protected the empire from the barbarian tribes to the north. In the east, the boundary was the Persian Empire. In the south, below the long, fertile strip along the North African coast, the Sahara Desert bounded the empire. Except for a few variations, especially in the east, because of the wars with Persia, these boundaries were maintained for more than four centuries. Number four, Pax Romana. In this vast empire, the Pax Romana, Roman peace, made trade and travel both easy and safe. 
by land, sea, and river, it was possible to travel from one end of the empire to the other. It also encouraged the development of culture in every way, leading to great achievements in literature, architecture, and sculpture. The study of law was greatly developed. The economy provided varying degrees of prosperity throughout the empire. Everywhere the Roman army was a symbol of Roman power, Roman law, and Roman peace. Not least, there was a common language, Greek, in which one could communicate in the larger part of the empire. A careful reading of the book of Acts will reveal many of the characteristics of the Roman Empire mentioned in this section. The Jewish Background The roots of the Christian Church reach back deeply into the history and religion of Israel. Salvation, said Jesus, is from the Jews. John 4.22 Jesus came not to destroy, but to fulfill the law and the prophets. Matthew 5.17 Those who belong to Christ are Abraham's offspring. Heirs, according to the promise, Galatians 3.29. As Palestine was part of the Roman Empire, so the church is related, and very deeply so, to Israel, the people of Palestine. The earliest church was wholly Jewish, her Savior was a Jew, and the entire New Testament was probably written by Jews. It would therefore be useful to take brief note of Israel's history. Number 1. David to Alexander. The kingdom of Israel was founded by David, the son of Jesse, in about 1000 BC. He reigned until about 960 BC. David placed such a stamp on the kingdom and upon the kingly office that he became a symbol of Israel's later messianic hopes. After the death of his son Solomon in about 930 BC, the kingdom David had established was split into two parts. The northern part, called Israel, was taken into Assyrian exile in 721 BC. It was never restored. The southern kingdom, Judah, which had remained true to the house of David, had a longer history. In 586 BC, however, it too went into exile in Babylon. In 539, Cyrus, king of Persia, conquered Babylon. He allowed any exile who wished to return to Jerusalem to do so. The following year, a number of them returned to their native land. These returnees, in time, rebuilt the temple, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had destroyed. After the first return, other groups went back to Palestine. One of their leaders was Ezra, a priest who was deeply devoted to the Mosaic Law. It was his strong desire to make the observance of the Torah, Israel's law, a living part of Jewish religion again. The Pharisees, whom we meet so often in the Gospels and the Book of Acts, grew out of the movement to restore the law that Ezra had begun. Between 334 and 323 BC, Alexander, the young Macedonian king, conquered all lands east of Greece up to India and as far south as Egypt. When he died in 323 BC, his generals divided among themselves the empire he had created. Ptolemy became ruler of Egypt. His area of authority included Palestine, and it remained under the authority of his house until 198 B.C. In that year, the house that he had descended from another general. Seleucus gained control of Palestine. The Seleucids governed Syria, much of Asia Minor, and all of Persia. This change in the government of Palestine had very great consequences for the Jewish people. Number 2. The Maccabees the Ptolemaic kings had permitted the Jews to practice the religion freely. For more than 250 years after the return from exile, the Jews had observed the Mosaic laws Ezra had taught it to them. Now their new masters pressed them to surrender their ancient religion and follow Greek ways. The leader of this movement was Antiochus IV, the Seleucid king of Syria. He came to the throne in 175 B.C. When the Jews resisted his policies, riots and massacres resulted. The Jewish religion was forbidden, Greek religion was enforced, prostitutes were brought into the temple, and Jewish ceremony was prohibited, especially circumcision. Most offensive of all, the Torah was openly burnt. The rebellion against Seleucid rule that now broke out in full strength, 163 BC, was led by an aged priest named Mattathias and his four sons. Of these, Judas was the leader. Together, they are known as the Maccabees, that is, men who fight violently. 
In 141, the Jews gained complete victory over their Seleucid enemies, and for the first time since 586 BC, Israel again became an independent nation. She kept her freedom only 80 years. In 63 BC, civil war in Palestine gave occasion to Rome to establish her authority there. For the next 60 years, Israel was semi-independent, her rulers being appointed by Rome. In 37 BC, Herod, known as Herod the Great, during whose reign Jesus was born, became king with Rome's approval. After his death, the kingdom was divided among his sons. Archelaus received Judea, Samaria, and Idumea. Herod Antipas received Galilee and Perea, and Philip received the area northeast of Galilee. In A.D. 6, Archelaus was disposed because of misconduct and sent into exile.